Hi there guys, and uh, good to be back with you again. We've got another game against the Cold 45s. We'll see if we have any uh, better luck today. It will be Bob Ojeda against George Burnett. Before we start off though, let's go take a real quick look here at the uh, standings. The uh, Mets now six and a half games behind the Dodgers as uh, the Mets have lost twice. Dodgers have won twice um, in a row. And so Los Angeles 44 and 20, New York 33 and 22, and then of course San Francisco 36 and 28. They're more of an afterthought at the moment. Over in the American League, the uh, Twins with a 43 and 17 record and a 717 winning percentage, and uh, they're running away with the show. Um, the Yankees now have lost two in a row, so the New York teams um, both having some problems. And we go straight back here to this game. So it's going to be Lenny Dykstra here to lead this off against uh, George Burnett. Looks like everything is uh, ready to go and uh, working fine. And so we'll go ahead and uh, get this game under underway. And uh, George Burnett, the uh, starting pitcher uh, for uh, Houston, has a 2-3 and three record. But don't let that fool you. Um, he throws a ball outside to Dykstra. He's got a 2.86 ERA, does Burnett. And uh, we have a hard time against this uh, Houston pitching staff, I'll tell you what. We had a 20-inning game that we lost, and uh, then we lost that game uh, yesterday, 3-1. 2-1, and, one. Uh, one, two and one, sorry, the count to Lenny. That was just low. I thought that was going to be called a strike. And uh, that's outside, so it's 3-1. and one. Next pitch comes in, and this is blasted to center. Uh, but that's going to be playable, I think. Yes, it is playable for Warwick for the first out, one away. Brings up Mookie Wilson, who's hitting an even 300. Um, he hits a ground ball over to short. Lillis throws to first, and there's two gone just like that. That'll bring up Keith. Hernandez takes a strike, 0 and 1. First pitch strike. And there's a ball outside. 1 and 1 is the count. This is hit over to left. That's going to fall. No, it will be caught there by Spangler at the end. He was able to get there in time. And so we go now to the bottom of the first inning. It's uh, no score. This brings up Bob Lillis uh, leading off again for Houston. I still think it's strange to have him lead off, but uh, the uh, Colt 45s apparently are doing that. Ojeda throws him a ball outside. And Lillis tries to pull that, hits it over to Knight, who throws to first, one away. Bob Ojeda with a 9-1 record, 2.49 ERA, he struck out 68, walked 23. And this is hit over to right field and foul there by uh, Aspermonte, it's 0-1 on him. Hit again to right, this is going to be a fair ball, and that's going to land for a double. Over to the uh, side of Strawberry, he picks it up and throws it in, but it's a little bit too little too late. And so Houston winds up with the first hit of this ball game, and that'll bring up Al Spangler. And uh, the troubles the Mets have had against the Cole 45s continue. Spangler takes a ball inside, and then hits this one over to the left side just foul. That makes it 1-1. Uh, one one. This is uh, pulled over to the right, 1-2 and two now to count. And that's a piss, it's just low for ball two, so it's 2-2. Two and two. And he checked his swing and held up in time. Full count now. And this is fouled back. It's a full count still. Next pitch comes into Spangler. That is hit over to right. And that will be playable for Strawberry. Makes the catch. And there's two away here. Bottom of the first. Still run around at second base. Up comes Roman Mejias. He's hitting 306. Another dangerous hitter. And there is a strike to him 0-1. Houston, of course, was nowhere near this good in real life. As Mejias hits a, a, a little line drive over to center. Dijkstra's throw to the plate is nowhere near in time, and uh, Mejias goes to second on the throw, and it's one nothing for the Colt 45s. Here comes Carl Warwick. Colt 45s in this replay are around fifth place and keep playing well. Of course, it looks like they're just playing us well. Warwick hits a, line, a fly ball over to center, and Dijkstra has that for the out. We go now to the top of the second inning. Um, and it's a 1-0 score for Houston. Up comes Daryl Strawberry. I don't know what causes it. I don't know why um, uh, in OOTP in particular you tend to get teams that play a lot differently than they played in real life. 2-0 the count on Strawberry. Part of the reason why we don't know this is because it's a closed game engine. 2-1 as Strawberry swung on and missed. And this is blasted to the left. Will it be foul? I don't think that's playable. No, it's out of play. Two and two. It would be nice if we knew more about how the game actually worked. The strawberry swings and misses, and down he goes. One away. And now Gary Carter. It would be very nice because then we could figure out what's going on. This isn't the first replay I've seen with OTP where strange teams start getting really hot for some strange reason. One and one the count here on Gary. And this is hit over to right. That's going to be uh, playable easily for the right fielder, Mejias. And there's two away. I mentioned this before in that uh, video talking about uh, whether there's a divide in the community. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. 
most of your diehard OOTP fans um, encourage uh, having things that are far removed from real life, which for most uh, simulators is a very, very frustrating. There's a strike, uh, replayers I should say, and another strike, 0 and 2, the count on 9. Um, OOTP is definitely a game that is not as stat based as it is uh, sort of ratings based and how the ratings are determined is based on whatever algorithm the game has and some players get helped by it and some hurt. Two and two the count on Ray. And so you get strange things to happen. There's a full count now on Knight. Um, the Mets coming here and being in second place to the Dodgers is not necessarily that strange. There's a ground ball over to Lillis, the shortstop throws to first and that does it there for the uh, bot uh, top of the second. We go now to the bottom of the second. It's still 1-0 Houston. That's the thing. That's not the part that's strange. The part that's strange is uh, that the Mets keep losing to the Colt 45s and expansion team. There's a ball low to uh, Norm Larker, which is just strange. It, it strikes me as odd. 2-0 now the count. Mets pitching has not been good. 3-0 the count to Larker. It looks good on paper, but it's not been good. 3-1. It's not been good because we keep walking guys in key situations. And there's a foul ball to the right. It's a full count. And that's low, and that's what I've been talking about. Ojeda, with one walk, hasn't struck anyone out, and here comes Hal Smith. So we'll go back to double play depth and see what we can do. And there's a strike in the outside corner. Very generous call. And that's a fat strike in there. 0-2. Oh Foul the way. It remains 0-2. Oh and, and that's a ball low. 1-2 and two the count. 2-2 two and two as that misses inside. Ojeda still trying to be a little bit too fine. It's a ground ball back to the pitcher, and Ojeda goes to Santana for one and back over to first for the double play. And uh, there's two away. Here comes uh, Amalfitano, who's hitting eighth for some reason. Amalfitano would have been your uh, your uh, leadoff hitter for the Colt 45s in uh, 1962 in real life. He pops up a, a little swinging bunt, and uh, Knight catches that for the out. And so we go to the uh, top of the third inning. It's uh, still a 1-0 uh, lead for Houston. Up comes Santana. So, I mean, I guess it's uh, just the way that things are for the Mets. There's a ball low to Santana. The 86 Mets always having a problem with Houston. Foul the way, 1-1 the count. There's a ball inside, 2-1. I mean, it's not quite Mike Scott, Nolan Ryan, but... Um, uh, there are a couple of pitchers on this Houston team that are quite good. That was a, a ground ball, by the way, by Santana over to Aspermonte through to first for the out, one away. Here's Tim Tuffle. And uh, he takes a strike, 0 and 1. This is hit over to right. That's going to be foul, and it's uh, 0 and 2. I mean, we can take just a quick look here if you want at the uh, Houston pitching staff. You got Turk Farrell. Well, he's legitimately a good pitcher. I don't think we've seen too much of Bob Bruce, um, but George Burnett today, and we had yesterday Ken Johnson, and um, they've been pitching us uh, very, very well. Um, all good strikeout pitchers. 0-2 oh, the count, speaking of strikeouts, and Tuffle fouls one away. It remains 0-2. Oh, Tuffle hitting so poorly, I'm considering having Wally Backman hit against lefties. Uh, that's how bad it's been for Tim. And there's a ball inside, 1-2, and two, hitting 2 oh, 3 That's outside, 2-2 two two the count. And that's low. How did that miss? So it's a full count now in Tuffle. And this is hit over to right. That's going to hold up. And that'll be Mejias making the catch for out number two. The Mets have had no offense today. Here comes Ojeda. This is blasted over to left uh, center field. That'll be in there for a base hit. So of all people to get the hit, it's uh, Bobby Ojeda doing it. And that brings up now Lenny Dykstra. Dykstra's down to 344, and there's a strike in the outside corner. He does not like hitting against Houston, I'll tell you that. One and one pitch. And it's almost a wild pitch. Two and one the count. And that's a change of four. Strike way off the outside corner. What was that one? And uh, Dykstra ends up going that time. Swings and misses. And uh, down go the Mets. We go now to the uh, bottom of a, the uh, third inning. And uh, the uh, Mets losing still one nothing. Here comes George Burnett. And he fouls one away. 0 oh and one is the count on him. Ojeda with no strikeouts. And there's a ball inside. One and one. As I said before, as it's fouled away, OTP's more a game of in internal ratings. And uh, there's a swing and a miss for strike three. Ojeda finally gets it, one away. That can be good and that can be bad. And uh, when it comes especially to pitching, it can be very finicky. Up comes Lillis. So if you have a pitcher, and that's a ball away, if you have a pitcher in OTP who doesn't have enough good pitches at the right level, 2-0 and oh now the count, regardless of what he did in real life, he's going to struggle. You have to have a guy who's got maybe three good pitches to be a real star. Two and one the count. Now, you'll see here, and uh, you can click on anybody and see this, I've turned all of that stuff off uh, for the purpose of doing the simulation. 
uh, which is one of the things that kind of makes it difficult, right? It's hard to see how the game is rating guys. I want to do this as realistically as I can and not worry about arbitrary numbers, but it does mean that it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on when the Mets keep losing to Houston. Here's a little ground ball over to Tuffle. He uh, stops it but can't field it cleanly. That's going to be a base hit for Lillis. That brings up Bob Ospermonte. So runner on at first and uh, one away. We go to double play depth. OTP's rating system is there's a strike to Aspermonte. It's, uh, it's always struck me as being just totally arbitrary. 0-1 the count. That's fouled away. It's 0-2. And, and there's really not much rhyme or reason about it. You can read on the forums about it. And there is a curve low. 1-2 the count. But it's, it's so much different than everything else that you have in other sims. And there's a strike down the middle. I'm not sure how Aspermonte could take that. So there's two away. And here comes Al Spangler. It's a lot different, and I think that's one of the reasons why people criticize it as much as they do. Spangler takes the ball inside and hits a line drive over to first. Hernandez makes that catch for the out. And so we'll go to the top of the fourth inning now, and uh, the Mets still uh, trailing 1-0. Up comes Wilson. Not to say it's a bad game. It's actually a good game. Swing and a miss by Wilson, 0-1. But I think a lot of people would say that there are games that are better. There's a ball outside, 1-1. Next pitch in there, and that's inside. Oh, uh, they're going to say Wookie, Wookie Wilson went on that, so it's one and two. Wilson has struck out, by the way, uh, 22 times. Now, you can see, if you look at this, I don't have uh, the uh, actual statistics uh, for um, uh, the uh, 1986 Mets loaded up. It didn't load up as part of the um, import because of whatever setting that I used. Looking in real life, Wilson struck out 72 times in 416 uh, plate appearances. Um, here in this replay, well, he's probably got about 150 or so plate appearances and 22 strikeouts. So it's probably around the right rate, I would say. I think it's probably a little bit higher, though. And there's a swing and a miss, and down he goes. So that's 23. One away, and here comes Hernandez. It seems like Wilson is striking out more than um, he did in real life. There's a strike to Keith. And a ball outside. One on one. There's another ball inside. Two and one the count. Now, when you get down to it, every game uses some sort of rating system, right? I mean, there's nothing that's going to be an exact duplicate of real-life statistics. There's always some sort of engine that you work with. This is fouled over the left. That's going to be out of play. Two and two on Keith. Uh, the problem, though, with a lot of these closed engine games is that if you don't know how it works and you don't know what's going on, you can feel really frustrated when things start going haywire. For example, as Keith hits a ground ball to Lillis, throws the first for the out. For example, when the uh, 1962 Colt 45s uh, started um, doing well and maybe challenging for one of the top three positions in the league. There's a strike and another strike on Strawberry, 0-2 oh, the count. He did strike out a lot in real life. Ball inside is 1-2 on and Daryl. And that's blasted up the middle for a base hit. So the Mets uh, finally get a runner on base here. It's only the second hit of the game. The first one, of course, belongs to Ojeda, and that brings up Gary Carter with two outs. And there's a strike, man. Uh, so 0-1 oh, the count, now 1-1 one one on uh, Carter. There's a pitch out, and Strawberry's not running. It's 2-1. and one. And uh, he's running that time, and he's gunned down. So uh, good throw there by Hal Smith, and that will do it for the Mets in the top of the fourth inning. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's still 1-0 Houston. Up comes Roman Mejias. Now, I'm interested to see what it would be like to do this project with a different game as Mejias takes the ball outside because I think that... Um, yeah, the chances are that other games might give us um, sort of a similar uh, result. One and one, the count of Mejias. And if we're going to be fair to OTP, we want to look at something like that. We want to do a direct comparison. There's the strike on the outside corner. That looked way outside. One and two, the count. Swing and a miss, and down goes Mejias. And so Hida is starting to get into his groove. He struck out three now, and here comes Carl Warwick. One nothing, Houston. And there's a ball low. One and zero. Oh. Off the outside corner, 2-0 and the count. That's up the middle for a base hit. So a good piece of hitting by Warwick, and that puts a runner on at first base with uh, one out here in the bottom of the fourth. We're going to double play depth here with uh, Norm Larker coming up. Larker hitting 288. He's got 17 driven in, and he takes a strike, 0-1. That's a hit foul to the right side, 0-2 and is the count. And this is blasted to center. That's another base hit. So Ojeda having a hard time. And as Dykstra is playing that one, lets it get behind him. So the runners move up on that air. And uh, that means that we ha the uh, 45s have runners on at uh, second and third with only one out. And that means we're going to walk Smith. And so we decide to intentionally walk him. 
and uh, we'll go into double play depth here now and see if we can't uh, cut something off. So uh, runners, uh, the base is loaded. Here comes a Malfitano who takes the ball low. He's hitting 226. There's a, a ball to him. Uh, that one just missed the corner, 2-0. It's a double play ground ball. Santana to Tuffle and on to first for the double play. And so the strategy works. We go now to the top of the fifth inning, and uh, the Mets continue to trail, but only by a score of 1 nothing. I feel like we've been trailing this whole series. Here comes Gary Carter. Blast this over to left, but um, it's just going to be a loud out. That's uh, going to be um, Spangler uh, catching that for the out. One away. Here's Ray Knight. There's a ball low, 1 0, fastball. And another one off the outside corner, 2 0 tonight. And it's 3 0 now, too. I'm looking at Burnett quickly. He's thrown only 62 pitches. We're here in the top of the fifth. And there's a strike to Ray, 3 and 1. And that's ball uh, four, low and inside. And so Knight now the runner on first. First walk given up by George today. That'll bring up Santana. And now you're thinking, okay, with one out, what do you do? Santana's hitting horribly. He bunts this one over to the pitcher, and uh, Burnett had to play at second, but chose to go to first instead. Didn't really take much time to think about it. And so the bunt does work. Knight goes to second, but you've got to wonder about the logic there. Here comes Tim Tuffle. Tuffle's driven in eight. So we'll see if we can get something from him, and they're going to walk him intentionally, which is another interesting decision with two men out. And so that'll bring up Bob Ojeda, the pitcher. He's one for one, hitting 133, and he takes the ball low, 1-0. This is hit over to center, but it's going to hold up. And it ends up working out for the Colt 45s as Warwick makes that catch. We go now to the bottom of the fifth inning, and it is uh, still a 1-0 lead for Houston. Here comes George Burnett. Burnett struck out last time and takes a strike. Uh, their pitcher, he's, uh, of course, not hitting much at all. There's a ball inside, 1-1. That's a fastball low, 2-1 the count. Uh, that was a good pitch on the outside corner that he wasted, 2-2. Two and two. And there's strike three called, and there's one away. Bob Lillis up there now. And there's a change up down, and then 1-0 and oh the count. Off the outside corner, 2-1. 2-0, and one. Two and oh, sorry. Now it's 2-1 and one with that swing and a miss by Bob. Head over to center. In comes Dykstra, and he's there in time. There's two away, and up comes Bob Ospermonte. Only five hits for the Colt 45s, but they made him count. They have one run. 2-0 no, the count now on Aspermonte. Ground ball over to short. Santana fields it and throws to first for the out. And so that's all she wrote for the Colt 45s in that half inning. We go to the top of the six, and it's still a 1-0 lead for the Colt 45s. Here comes Lenny Dykstra. Mets here as he take, Dykstra takes the ball up and in, 1-0. No. Mets are accustomed to playing games in these uh, pitchers' ballparks. There's a slider inside, 2-0. and oh, That's what City Field is. This has popped up and out of play. 2-1 and one the count now on Lenny. Remember, we're using the uh, version of City Field from the original City Field uh, before they brought the uh, fences in. 3-1 and one the count. And that's a sli strike off the outside corner. Real tough calls. There's a full count now on Dykstra, and he fouls one away. And he did not swing that time, and that's a surprising call. So Dykstra gets the walk, and up comes Mookie. And they're going to have to start throwing over the first. There's another throw to the bag. We're going to kind of try to time this. And he times it well, and he gets his stolen base. That's number 41 of the season for Dykstra. That was a strike to Wilson. So runner on at second. It's only a one nothing game, and the Mets are knocking on the door. Wilson powers this one to right, but that's going to be foul, I believe. Yes. 0-2 oh, the count. Swing and a miss, and down he goes. And this is what I'm talking about when you're talking about his strikeout. Seems to be more often than normal. Wilson has struck out two times today. In that 20-inning uh, game, he struck out five, if I remember right. Here comes Hernandez, and he takes the ball in the dirt, 1-0. and Swing and a miss. It's 1-1 one one on Keith. And there's a slider low, 2-1 and one the count. Swing and a miss in that off-speed pitch, and he really chased after that. It's 2-2. Two and two. And he chased that one low, so Burnett now with five strikeouts, and uh, the Mets are stranding this chance. Two away, and here comes Darrell. Strawberry takes a ball. He had a hit last time up. One for two. There's a strike in the knees. One and one. Blasted to center, but that's going to be allowed out. No. Yes. Yes, it is. That was a great catch there by Warwick as he jumped at the last second. I thought it was beyond him. But now he made the catch for the out. 
The Met, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and uh, the Mets still trailing 1 0. Up comes Al Spangler against Ojeda. And time is running out. Spangler fouls one away, 0 and 1. And takes a strike, 0 and 2. Good screwball there by Ojeda. Just outside, 1 and 2. And that was low, I guess, for ball two. Two and two, the count. That's inside, full count. Fouled away, just barely. Ground ball to second, tough along to first. There's one away. Here now comes Roman Mejias. One away, bottom of the six, and he hits a fly ball over to center. That's playable easily for Dykstra, maybe not so easily. He ends up jumping slightly to catch that one, but it's another loud out. Two away, and here comes Carl Warwick. He had that big uh, defensive play against Strawberry in the top of the six, and there's a strike to Warwick. And a ball low, one and one. And it's a ball just outside, two and one the count. And that's low, three and one, and Ojeda's being a little bit too fine with him. Swing and a miss, it's a full count. But Ojeda has this tendency to try to be a little too fine with some of these hitters, and Warwick makes him pay. That's a line drive single to right in front of Strawberry. That'll bring up Norm Larker, and we continue to struggle against Houston. There's a strike to Norm, 0 and 1. Ground ball over to shore, this should do it. Santana fields it and flips over to Tuffle, and that does it. We go to the top of the uh, seventh inning, and uh, the Mets are running out of time. Here comes Gary Carter. 1-0 Houston. There's a ball down low, 1-0. Blasted over to center, but it's allowed out. Warwick's got that one easily, one away. Here comes Ray Knight. The ball inside, 1-0. The uh, game's telling me that Ojeda's hot, but uh, he's losing 1-0. This is fouled to the uh, right side, 1-1 one one the count. That was way up and outside, and uh, Knight chased that one and hit a fly ball to center. Warwick's got it, two away. Here comes Santana, and you talk about cold. He's been really cold, and he hears me and blasts a base hit through the right side. So Santana gets his first hit in what feels like an eternity. He's now hitting 197. Here comes Tim Tuffle, who's also been cold, and he takes the fastball for a strike. There's a changeup inside, 1-1. One one. Fouled over to the right side, 1-2. and two. A little ground ball along the third base line. That's going to be a good play there by Aspermonte. Throws over to first base for the out. That does it for the Mets in the top of the seventh. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. It's uh, still a 1-0 lead for Houston, and up comes Hal Smith. Ojeda stops him off, starts him off there with a fastball. That's fouled away. 0-1 the count. Next pitch was inside on him. It's uh, popped over to the left side. Wilson comes racing over and makes the catch and foul ground for the out. One away. Here's Amalfitano. A little comebacker back to uh, the pitcher. And I uh, tell you, Ojeda throws to first, and it's a poor throw. And uh, that's uh, going to allow Amalfitano to get on to first base with that air. Second air of the ball game by the Mets. That'll bring up Burnett. Uh, I look at double play depth, but no, we're going to have the infield come in because he's going to bunt. And uh, instead, the runner runs to second, and uh, he's got that one stolen. Carter didn't get that one out of his glove quite on time, so uh, frustrating, uh, to say the least. Burnett now will swing away. It's 0-2 on him. And there's a changeup away. 1-2. and two. Fouls this away again. And that's low. 2-2 two two the count. Swing and a miss, and there he goes. The two away, we go back to normal depth, and here's Lillis, and he hits a ground ball over to Hernandez, who turns and throws to Ojeda, covering at the bag for the out, and uh, that will bring us up to the top of the eighth inning. So uh, the Mets able to get out of that uh, little jam in the bottom of the seventh. It uh, wasn't very much, but uh, we need to make some jams for them. Here comes Bob Ojeda, and he hits one foul to the left side. Mets with only three hits in these games, and Ojeda has one of them. In this game, I should say. Swing and a miss. It's 0-2 on Bob. And that's strike three. Over the heart of the plate, you can't take that pitch. One away, here comes Lenny Dykstra. So a little gripes and complaints here, but uh, sometimes this game gets it right, and that was a real nice-looking strike. There's a strike to Dykstra and a ball low. One and one. Hit over to the left side and just foul. One and two here on Lenny. And that's strike three call. That one looked a little outside, and it was. Uh, but uh, you've got to be up there hitting when you got a 1 2 count on you. And uh, Burnett now has struck out seven. Here comes Wilson, who struck out twice today. 
And he makes contact, hits this over to left, that'll be in there for a base hit. So Mookie gets to first, and that'll bring up Keith Hernandez. See if the Mets can make something happen here. First pitch is in there, and Wilson going for second, and he's gunned down by Smith again. So uh, the Mets end up wasting the chance. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's uh, still a 1-0 lead for Houston, and here's Bob Aspermonte. There is a strike knee high, 0-1 to Aspermonte. And a ball low, curveball, 1-1. Fouled away, 1-2. Fouled away again, remains 1-2 on Aspermonte. He didn't go, they say. 2-2 two two now the count. Swing and a miss, down he goes. One away, here's Al Spangler. Bohita now has struck out six. He is pitching well, but he gave up that run. There's a strike. And 0-2 oh and now the count. That's high, 1-2 and two the count. Swing and a miss, down he goes. Bohita has seven and 75 this season. Uh, nine and one the record is about to be nine and two unless the Mets come up with a miracle. There's a ball high to Mejias, one and oh. That's fouled away, one and one. Ground ball to short, and Santana fields it and throws to first. And that does it for the Colt 45s in the bottom of the eighth inning. And so we'll go to the top of the ninth. I tell you, Ojeda's looking good, and he's probably saying, I want to go back out, though. He better let uh, Keith Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry know about that. It's going to be Hernandez, Strawberry, and Carter here to lead this inning off, and we hope we can get to Ray Nine. So uh, Hernandez comes up there hitting 348. Don McMahon is the uh, new pitcher here for the uh, Colt 45s. There was a ball to Keith, 1-0. And, oh. and there's a strike, 1-1. One one. We've seen quite a bit of McMahon. We saw him yesterday, right? This is fouled up to the left. It's one and two. So we've seen him in every one of these games in this short series. There's a ball low. Two and two now to Keith. Outside. Full count on Hernandez. And it's a little ground ball over to Lillis. And he fields it. And then he drops it. And they're going to give that as an infield hit there to Hernandez. So Hernandez now has a uh, hitting streak going on. And that'll bring up Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry's one for three today. He has struck out once. And uh, we'll see what he can do here. He takes a slider outside, 1-0. It's one of those um, cases, and uh, there's a uh, strike called, 1-1. One, one. one of those cases where you really ask yourself whether it's worth it to bring in the so-called closer because uh, the starter was doing so well. And this is blasted over to right center field. That baby's gone. So Strawberry hits a huge bomb 474 feet away. And that makes us a 2-1 to one lead for the Mets all of a sudden. And I was just talking about that. Did you really want to take the starter out? We had such a hard time against Burnett. McMahon comes in and Strawberry uncorks an absolute wicked shot against him. And it's a 2-1 lead for the Mets. The Mets now with six hits. But how about that? Here comes Carter and he takes the strike of the knees. Curveball 0-1. And there's a ball outside, 1-1. One 1962, one. you don't have very many closers. There's a ball low, 2-1. Two but that's the way the computer plays it, and if it plays it that way, we'll take advantage. 2-2, two and two, the count is as fouled away. And there's a ball low. Full count now on Gary. Blasted foul to the right. Count remains full. This is hit over to center. I think it's going to fall. No, it holds up for Warwick. There's one, uh, one away now, and here comes Ray Knight. It's twilight, but not quite dark here yet. Almost 10 o'clock. There's a strike to Ray. I've not. I've never been to Houston. I don't know if that's realistic for the uh, middle of the summer. One and one the count. There's a fastball in there for a strike tonight. It's one and two. Little ground ball over to short, and Lillis throws to first, and there's two away. Here now is Santana. Santana is one for two with a single. Finally got ahead. There's a ball low to him. One and zero. Oh. He's still hitting shy of 200. Foul to the left side. It's one and one. So now I know why Davey Johnson was thinking he wanted to bring up someone like Kevin Ulster. Hit over to right the foul. We're trying to get Keith Mitchell to, uh, or Kevin Mitchell, sorry, to uh, figure out how to play short. One and two, the count remains. And this is hit over to the left side. It's going to be Aspermonte making the uh, play and throwing to first for the out. But the Mets get the one, and uh, here comes Bob Ojeda out there. He's got 106 pitches thrown. He'll face Warwick, Larker, and Smith, all of whom have uh, power uh, potential. There's a strike to Warwick. It's 0-1. And belt high strike, 0-2, looking good for Ojeda. 
and this is blasted over to right. That's a base hit in front of Strawberry. So what the Mets are going to do it the hard way here right away. And now Darkness has finally fallen, and uh, we go to double play depth now against uh, Norm Larker. He's driven in 17. The fouls went away to the right side, 0-1. There's a fastball missing inside, 1-1, and, and he decides to bunt. And it's a poor play there by Ojeda. He throws over to first, and Larker's going to be called safe. I know that on the uh, replay, it looks like uh, uh, Hernandez got to the bag in time, but that's not the way that this works, unfortunately. That'll bring up now Hal Smith. We're going to stick with Ojeda for the time being. We're going to double play depth. There's a ball inside to Smith. One and, one. and a strike. One and one. That's a ground ball over to third. Knight over to Tuffle and on to first. And that's the twin killing, and that means it's all up to Joey and Malfitano. Ojeda stays in and takes the ball away, and Carter almost let that one get away from him, but uh, was able to recover in time. And there's a strike of the knees, 1-1. One one. Swing and a miss, it's 1-2. and two. And the changeup is just low. Man, what a pitch to take, 2-2. Two and two. Ground ball back to Ojeda, and he throws to first. This time it works for the out. So the Mets losing the whole way. Mets come up with uh, two in the top of the ninth on the huge home run by Strawberry, and uh, we finally beat Houston for once. And uh, this will put us, I think, either six or keep us six and a half behind Los Angeles. I didn't see what they did against Milwaukee. Um, so the Mets with the win, which is what counts, and that stops the two-game losing streak. And now we go back home to play against the Cubs. We'll see you tomorrow with that one. I hope you enjoyed this game. Um, it was interesting, I'll tell you that. Uh, final score, Mets uh, two runs, six hits, and three errors. Uh, Houston, one run, seven hits, and no errors. And Ojeda's going to give me gray hairs. I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.